project scope is defined as all the work required to complete a project's deliverables. By making it clear exactly what is required, you also make it clear what's not required. So project scope is like a boundary around a project, with everything required to complete it on the inside and everything else outside. If you don't draw a boundary clearly, too little may be put into a project and it will fail to meet requirements. Putting in too much could lead to schedules not being met and costs getting too high. Just as the project has a scope, the product also has a scope. It's defined by all of the components, functions, and features the product must have to meet requirements, but not to exceed these. Project scope is the work required to deliver the product, so project scope is based on product scope. If new features are added to the product, it impacts product scope as well as increases project scope. At the same time, if the project budget is cut, you may need to decrease quality or amount of work completed, which will impact product scope. So you see how product scope and project scope are different, yet very closely related and intertwined. Scope creep is what happens when the scope of a project changes, usually an increase, without the change being managed. Often these changes seem minor, just a tweak here or there to improve things, but over time unmanaged changes add up and can have a major impact on project costs, schedules, and quality. By learning to recognize even the smallest variances from the original scope, you can address them and mitigate the risk that scope creep poses to a project. A project scope statement should have six main components. Together, these ensure everyone involved knows what falls within the project scope. They also form a basis for determining how to manage all remaining activities in the project's life cycle. The product scope description identifies all the attributes a deliverable must have to meet requirements. You use it as a baseline to create the work breakdown structure, which divides the work into more manageable work packages. You may also use it for later quality assurance activities, like quality testing and scope validation. A description of project deliverables is another important component. This makes it clear what stakeholders should expect to receive throughout a project and when the project closes. The Project Exclusion section is where you identify what deliverables won't include, in other words, scope exclusions. This ensures stakeholders know and agree about what the project won't deliver. To be clear, you would only list product exclusions that might naturally be expected as a feature of the product. For example, if you are creating brochures, you may note as an exclusion that the brochures will not be printed in color. The decision to exclude color printing may have been made in order to meet a cost constraint. As time goes on, we may forget conversations we had regarding product features. By noting exclusions, you may avoid misunderstandings later. A project scope statement should include product acceptance criteria. These are the standards stakeholders and the project team agree to use to judge whether the project's deliverables have met requirements. The criteria play an important role at the close of a project or any of its phases. They're used to verify scope and to confirm completion and acceptance of deliverables. It's important to detail product acceptance criteria. Otherwise, it's possible that not everyone will agree that a requirement has been met or even that a project is successfully completed. For example, a product may meet one set of standards for durability, but not another. If it isn't clear which standards must be used, the product could fail to satisfy some stakeholders. As well as defining product acceptance criteria, the scope statement should identify project constraints. These include any factors that could limit the success of the project or pose possible risks. Describing constraints often helps make it clear why certain scope exclusions were made. This makes it more likely that stakeholders will understand and agree to the scope statement. A final component that's important to define in the scope statement is project assumptions. These help identify possible risks if the assumptions prove to be incorrect. In summary, the project scope statement should include a product scope description, product acceptance criteria, and details of a project's deliverables, exclusions, constraints, and assumptions.